Okay, boys and girls, I want to talk to you today about making inferences. Now, this week we're going to be reading a fantasy story called Scaredy Squirrel. Now, fantasy stories often contain parts that are real along with ideas that the author makes up, right? Now, good readers combine what they know from real life with what the author says to make inferences about the text. So here, I have an anchor chart about making inferences. And you make inferences all the time, but you probably don't know that's what you're doing. Now, authors may not tell everything in a text. Sometimes you have to make inferences to fill in the holes. So you use clues from the text plus what you know to make inferences. You use text evidence plus background knowledge to fill in the holes in the text. So what you do is, is you use your own experiences to fill in those holes in a text. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you a video. And this video is going to give you some ideas about using and making inferences. And then you're gonna, it's all gonna become clear. So I have a really nice video I wanna show you that's gonna tell you about making inferences. But let me give you a quick example. So let's say you're reading a story and the character puts on rain boots and her rain coat and gets her umbrella and goes outside to wait for the school bus. What can you infer about the weather? What's it doing outside? Ivy? Raining. It's raining. Now the author isn't telling you it's raining, but you use your background, the knowledge that you have and your experience to figure out it's raining outside. Because you know that you wear rain boots, rain boots and a coat and use an umbrella when it's raining. The author doesn't have to tell you that. You make inferences to fill in the holes on that. We're gonna watch a video. I think you're gonna enjoy the video. So let me find it right here. Making inferences at Grammar Songs by Melissa. What is an inference? More importantly, how can learning to make inferences make me a better reader? Let's get started. An inference is a conclusion reached on the basis of evidence and reasoning. Good readers infer by using what they already know, prior knowledge, along with clues in the text, text evidence to form an idea. Did someone say clues? Yes, Detective Waddle. Looking for clues is very important when making inferences. Let me show you. We make inferences every day in real life without even realizing it when we use the clues around us to make sense of what is happening. Stanley must be hungry. He was probably speeding. That man is scared. Tony does not like sushi. In everyday life, people combine the clues they see with their prior knowledge. Stanley always cries when he's hungry to form an inference. Stanley is crying. He must be hungry. What inference could you make if you walked into this cafe, Detective Waddle? What clues do you see? I see party hats, I see presents, I see happy children, and I see a cake with candles. So, Detective Waddle, what inference would you make? Use the clues you see and your prior knowledge to form an idea. Oh no, I know, she is having a birthday party. The clues are the hats, the presents, the friends, and the cake. My prior knowledge tells me that the birthday girl is the one who will blow out the candles. My idea or inference is that she is having a birthday party. Very good, Detective Waddle. I know how to look for clues and make inferences in real life, but how can I make inferences when I read? That is an excellent question, Detective Waddle. Let me show you. When you read, you need to use the same steps your brain automatically takes when you make an inference in real life. First, you must look for clues, but now the clues are found in the text as text evidence. 
Then you add what you already know, your prior knowledge to the situation at hand. Finally, you put everything together to form an idea or make an inference. Let's read a short story and look for clues to make an inference. Shelton was getting hungry. He went to the kitchen where his mom was carefully putting long thin noodles into a pot of boiling water. In another pot, she was heating red sauce. First, we need to look for clues in the text. What clues do you see? Well, Shelton was hungry. His mother put long thin noodles in boiling water and heated a red sauce. Very interesting. Now we need to use what we already know, our prior knowledge. But how? Well, Shelton was hungry. When I'm hungry, I want to eat. His mother was putting long thin noodles into boiling water. In another pot, there was red sauce. So she was cooking something for him to eat. Great idea. So now we just need to make an inference. We can form an idea based on the text evidence and our prior knowledge. I know, I know, spaghetti. Shelton's mother is making spaghetti. It all makes sense now. Very good, I was making spaghetti. Have some. Making inferences can be quite delicious. Let's read another short story. We will look for clues and use our prior knowledge to form an idea or make an inference. Bob came home from school one day. He happily opened the cookie jar. It was empty. He saw some crumbs leading to the living room. When he entered the room, his little sister Megan looked up at him and smiled. She had crumbs all over her face. First, we need to look for clues in the text. Detective Waddle, what clues do you see? Well, the cookie jar was empty. There were crumbs leading to the living room. Megan looked at Bob and had crumbs on her face. Very good. Now we need to use what we already know, our prior knowledge. Detective Waddle? Well, when Bob came home and found the cookie jar empty, he was disappointed. I know I feel disappointed when things don't turn out the way I planned. I also know that Bob followed a trail of crumbs to the living room where his sister Megan had crumbs on her face. I know little kids make a mess when they eat something. My prior knowledge tells me that Megan was eating something. Very good. Now put your clues and prior knowledge together to form an idea or make an inference. I know, I know. The cookie jar was empty because Megan ate all the cookies. It all makes sense. The empty jar, Megan's face, and the crumbs. Poor Bob. Bob, Megan, I'm baking some chocolate chip cookies. Hooray! Hooray! I infer we will eat cookies today. Hooray, Detective Waddle. You did a fantastic job learning to make inferences. Thank you for joining me at Grammar Songs by Melissa. Enjoy other related videos at GrammarSongs.com. Get ready. Okay, so were you able to figure out the clues, what happened to the cookies? Did you know that the baby sister ate the cookies? Mm -hmm. Were you able to figure out that they were cooking spaghetti for dinner? Yeah. Yes, very good. So you infer you use your previous knowledge to fill in the missing holes and stories. So sometimes it's very evident what is going on. Good job, boys and girls, good job.